With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Good afternoon, 18th century British statesman and philosopher Edmund Burke said, the only thing necessary for triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. A fitting quote. As we reflect on the news over the past few weeks, which has seen an ugliness of our people emerge, fueled by daily gruesome headlines and social media, unfortunately, it's anything but sensationalism. These are real stories, and the main characters, sadly, are not here to tell them. We're getting real today on Real Talk with me, Anele. We talk intimate partner femicide. It is reported that South Africa's femicide rate is five times higher than the global average, as if there should be an average. And according to the South African Medical Research Council, a woman dies at the hands of their partner every eight hours. I'm first joined in studio today by Major General Debelo Musigidi, National Head of the Family Violence, Child Protection and Sexual Offences Investigation Unit of the SAPS, Lebu Ramafuku, Gender Activist and CEO of the Soul City Institute, as well as Dr. Jared Labuskakni, MD of Threat South Africa and former Brigadier in charge of the Investigative Psychology Unit of the SAPS, and to this day regarded as one of the top criminologists and profilers in the country. Good afternoon, guys. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go with you, General, first. What is going on? <laughs> really, there's no other way for me to ask it. What is going on? Is, is it a case of it all of a sudden being reported more? It was always there? Or are we really on a surge of femicide? Annele, it has been there. It has always been there. And I'm glad that people are getting used to the social media. Mm -hmm. And I think our media is also exposing some of the things that were happening but were not told. Oh. Nonetheless, it is escalating. I must say it is, it is getting more and more violent and it is getting more and more ugly. Jared, I saw you nodding when you said it's always when she said it's always yeah. been like that. I want to, you to jump in there. I have to agree. I mean, if I just look at the cases that, that myself I've worked on over the years of intimate partner femicides that were horrific and gruesome that don't even get mentioned in the media. Uh. You know, during the Oscar Pistorius trial, we had Oscar Pistorius in the one court, and then right next door, another young lady who was murdered by her boyfriend hardly got any media attention. I think one journalist happened to comment on that during the, uh. during the Times. So it's definitely, I would say, it's a spike in media attention. But, you know, I would love it if we were horrified every day about what's mm. going on in terms of the rape of women and children and, of course, the murders that, 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 that you mentioned. Mm. Lebu, you too, nodding. I mean, it's, it's obviously always been happening. Now, the problem is then why is it rising? Um, the parties who are aware of it, why is it rising? Why are we not doing anything about it? I think, Anele, what we have seen globally is the fact that especially for organizations that are doing the prevention work. Yeah. Globally, support for those organizations has dwindled. So if you look at organizations like POWA, Tswaranang, mm. and a whole lot of organizations, Masimenyani, uh, the biggest complaint is the fact that people who work in those organizations get burnt out. And in fact, there is very little resources globally that goes into the kind of gender activism that is needed to turn the tide globally. Money is really not coming into these organizations. But also, it is not seeing priority mm -hmm. in the way that we plan. Unfortunately, I believe that when you interrogate a whole lot of our plans mm -hmm. as a country, gender and the issue of women and what is happening to them does not see the kind of spotlight that it does except when we event. I think mm. in South Africa, mm. we are very good at eventing, mm. you know? Mm. And also, exactly, and mm. also that eventing is also <coughs> not backed by Action. theory and, pr and practices that we know works. So you will see, and I, and I can tell you this, yeah. around 16 days of activism, so many people will be calling us, so, so what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. But in fact, what have we done through the year that demonstrates the fact that we are working very tirelessly oh. at this problem. We run the Rise Young Women's Clubs at Soul City. Oh. And we started Rise Young Women's Clubs in, 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 in two years ago. Almost every month, there was a young woman who was dying. 
to a point where I ask the question, why do we hate young women, so particularly much. black young women, poor young women, so much? So when it comes to, you said burnout, you right? So it's burnout and because of lack of a resource, is the burnout also a case of, I'm working in, in, in these organizations that are there to prevent it and take the, you know, the, the, the percentage down. But I'm so sick of hearing about these stories myself that it starts, you know, it, it starts making my own life deteriorate. You, 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 you end up fearing. You, you end up people saying you, you, you are even paranoid mm -hmm. that this thing will happen. You, you end up everywhere you go, every person that you talk to, mm. you see that particular individual either as a suspect mm. or as a victim because these things keep on coming and they keep on coming worse and worse all the time. Yeah. I think for, for the noise that was made a, a, a back then, that is why the, the, the re review was done on the Domestic Violence Act. Mm. But even after the enactment of the act, after as ratifying a lot of acts, mm. a lot of, of, of joining organization, being part of the UN declarations. Mm. Mm. We, we don't see it getting better. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's escalating to the extent that you ask yourself, if I talk about this particular issue, is it fueling mm. the manner in which people are thinking mm. and the manner in which people are responding to what is happening around? It, it, it's getting more, my daughter was saying, mommy, I will not even get into a taxi mm. because I, I'm scared that these things that you keep telling us will happen to, to me. me. So yeah. this is the kind of life that we are living, fearing for a man next door, fearing mm. for, you don't even know which man do I trust if I walk. I came upstairs, Anele, with two guys. I said to them, I don't trust you guys. Can I trust you? Because it's something happening. Imagine if it's me who is having this feeling. Yeah. What about a person? Maybe I'm having this feeling because I am dealing with them on an hourly basis. Mm. Every day. So what you take Not with only you. in yeah. Gauteng. The reports that we, we, we had recently is the cases that gain that momentum mm -hmm. of getting on the social media, on getting, being reported. But it's not only uh, here. We're not even touching the surface. No. We're, We're not, not even touching the surface of, the, of where it's happening. Gerard, mm. um, you know, with the cases that you've seen and you've worked on, and they've been countless, right? Would you say that South African men are angry? Look, I think there's definitely a culture that we need to change. <clears throat> I don't mean culture in terms of cultural groups. There's yeah. an attitude towards yes. women that we have to start changing, and that's going to take decades, because I think we were discussing earlier, that mm. has to start from how we raise our kids mm -hmm. when they're very, very small. Mm. <clears throat> and sort of raise them in a way that respects women, that respects other people and their choices and their decisions in life. But then on the other side, we also have to make sure that when people commit these crimes, that, they're gonna, that there's yeah. a good chance they're going to get caught and face yeah. jail time. So yeah. you almost have to have two sides. Yeah. Trying to raise people better. And unfortunately, no matter how we raise some children, you'll always get some that will commit crime. Yeah. But the thing was also know that as soon as that happens, there's a 90% chance, 95% chance they're going to get caught yeah. and they're going to go to jail. Because it doesn't matter what laws you've got. If a person doesn't feel like I will ever get caught. Consequence. Then there's no, they, yeah. will get, they will continue to do these things. Mm -hmm from that side, from that angle. Do you feel like South Africans live without a fear of consequence? I don't think in gender-based violence and in the way women are treated generally, because I think violence is the last part or the extreme part of a continuum of a whole lot of ways in oh. which we treat women. So for me, when the narrative is not all men and all of that, mm. I actually look at what is the continuum. Mm. There are no consequences for myriad ways of ways in which men treat women in the way they speak about women mm -hmm. in the way they conduct mm -hmm. their own relationships 60 mm -hmm. percent of children in south africa are brought up in single households men can have 15 firstborns and not be accountable have to no any of them. accountability at all and and there's just so many things and and i liked what uh, uh, you said about that uh, people must be caught. We are running a campaign right now where we say we, the public, demand safe uh, public transport, mm. safe taxis now. And the problem is you get into a taxi, but there is no screening for any guy who drives a taxi. He can be anyone. He could be a serial rapist. He could be a serial killer. killer. 
you could be putting your child in a taxi that basically is driven by a pedophile. And in the case of a program that we do, Soul Buddies Clubs, it took 11 year olds to report who were in the clubs, a 60 year old man who had a history of raping kids that he had been transporting. So how do we in October talk about public transport month, we close the roads in Sentin and we say Everybody people must, must take, walk, take taxis. Exactly, when in fact we can't regulate where the bulk of our poor, vulnerable people take taxis on a daily basis. Okay, we're gonna take a break. Join in the conversation by sending your voice notes to our WhatsApp number, it's on the screen. We'll be right back, you don't wanna go anywhere. Welcome back to Real Talk. Today we are talking femicide. Uh, Gerard, so during a relationship, uh, apparently there are critical times where femicide is most likely to happen. Can you run me through those times? Well, it's simply, obviously in, in these scenarios, almost 90% of the time, there's a history of domestic controlling behavior, violence, etc., towards the, the, the lady. Mm. Now, there's, those things are going to be heightened when you have a time of separation, uh, when, the, when the lady perhaps starts to get into a new relationship with someone else. Um, when there's dis uh, when there's an interdict taken out or a protection order, so those are definite times where the risk for violence is increased. Uh. So even though some of the legal steps we have to try and deal with the situation aren't necessarily reducing the risk to the female, and that's what, that's what we also need to explain. Mm. You can take out a protection order, but mm. that can also make him angry. It doesn't mm. mean you shouldn't do it. Mm. But what steps are we, say, as yeah. the police or as the community, going to make sure that during that time there's heightened concern or protection of that particular individual? Mm. Um, some crimes have happened whilst there's been a, a protection order, oh, right? Yeah. Well, not even some, a, a, lot. Lot, of, a lot of them. Yeah. Now, how is that helping? Because then it's, it's a bit reactive because then mm. it's like, well, when he does go to court for killing you, then there's, you know what I'm saying? Then there's, there's proof that you were being abused. Yeah. How is that helping? Well, well, obviously the intent, the hope is that the person's going to realize that, you know, don't approach this individual because you're going to at the risk of getting arrested. Yeah. But countless, countless, countless cases, the woman have been approached by the person assaulted and of yeah. course the worst case scenario murdered. So really the idea is it's a legal mechanism that we can then arrest the person mm -hmm. for transgressing that. But even then, that also mm -hmm. heightens the risk because that person might get out on bail in mm -hmm. uh, a week or so's time mm -hmm. from that, from, from, the, from being arrested for the protection order. So we have to make sure that the police also understand that these are not solutions to the danger to the female. Yeah. Those are legal remedies. They're just mm -hmm. perimet perimeters that have been put there to yeah. make it easier, but it's not going to protect anyone. Yeah. Major General, your girl, your, your, your job here. It's this big. <laughs> but what it, it brings me to an element of the social mm -hmm. cohesion. It, yeah. It, yeah. it brings me to an element of why should it, it end up being reported to the authority. Uh -huh. it, you know, we need to deal with the social issues mm -hmm. that let it not happen. Let this man or this woman should not sleep the other partner because it starts with harsh words it gets into a slapping a then push. it's a fist tomorrow it's a knife it's a loss of life so for me personally is we need to deal with social fiber mm -hmm. that people should not commit at all because when it's get there i think what gerald is saying is it's it's the reality of the numbers that we can count you obtain a protection order today it worsens the, the situation you go back into a same household you go back because yeah. there are legal processes and procedures that need to be followed it, it, it cannot just be today it's reported you go to the police station it's jail, you will get bail. It's, it's our legal system. Mm -hmm. It must go through that because we need to test both sides. Mm -hmm. It Do goes you? to jail, you come back, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to interject. No, no, please go. You, you come back from jail, where do you go? Okay. Yeah. Where you transform. So as somebody who works you know, in the policing and quite closely at that, do you think that, because obviously most the, the reports that come out is, no, the police said, just go work it out with your husband when I went to go report. The police said, no, man, yeah, Tandana, this happens in love. Go talk to your boyfriend, you guys will be fine. And then at times when a case is open and is investigated upon and, you know, the protection orders are done, then I then go back on my own accord and be like, okay, I've forgiven my boyfriend, drop charges, and then I go back. Do you think that that has, has contributed to the deterioration in which 
police treat these manners because I find it that police are, and not all of them, but I mean, yeah, well, mm -hmm. not all of them, uh -huh. but I just find that there is a lack of support for civilians when it comes from the police side. And empathy. Mm. It shouldn't happen, Anele. It, it shouldn't, it's, it's not my space to judge mm. whether you two are in love. My job, it's clear. The act, it's very clear. Mm. When the report comes, you treat a victim as a victim. You don't have to tell the victim that you can sort it out or I, I start to, mm. to be a social worker as a police. Yeah. It's not my space. Yeah. It's not my space Can at all. Me? It must be referred to, we, we're having the whole lot of chain of responsibility between different uh, role players, different departments. You can't say as a police, both of you must come stand here. Let's hear why, why this have is you not a therapy it's session. Not, no, it's, it's a not. legal act. But police men operate within a social construct of patriarchy that socializes men a, in a particular manner. Uh -huh. And in fact, the prejudices that are in society, unfortunately, you find them with the police. Uh -huh. Even gays and lesbians will tell you that when you go and you are saying, I'm a woman, I'm Lebo, and my partner Anele yeah. basically beat me up. When you are a sex worker, you can even be raped by, by the, the police. police. And I think my major problem with all the public servants that must interface with women is that there aren't enough social consequences to the way in which they treat the public. Social consequences? Yeah, there are that? Or, or no consequences at all. I'll give you an example. Yeah. We are participating in this campaign that I spoke about. The in rise. response, No, the, the safe text is now yeah. in response to the taxi rapes here. Okay. Almost all the women who went to report at the police station, okay? were treated badly at the police station and even at one hospital. Mm. We don't have a public report of who that police officer That's is. That's what I was going to ask, uh, may, you Major, know what, I mean? what are and, the ramifications and, 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 and for that? There the, the aren't, and we are not having communities who that police station must serve mm. up in arms to be saying, you are a public servant paid by public taxpayer. It is therefore my right to get a, a good service. In fact, other shows have done an expose mm. on what happens at police stations. So unfortunately, it seems as if we don't have at a management level at the police station and also in the community, that's mm. why I'm talking about social consequences, a way of saying if I treated Anele this way, I must be wearing a badge, mm. I could be able to go to the head of that police station, report it, and there will be repercussions. Major General, I'm going to ask you because you're about to leave, are there any cases that we've known where policemen have been disciplined and, you know, discharged from service because they treated somebody coming to report badly? A lot, uh, uh, Anele, mm. a lot, Lebu. It, it should be reported. There it should be or it's done? It should be. It is done. Uh. It is done, and when we get such reports, they are dealt with according to the, the disciplinary code of conduct of the South African Police Service. Mm -hmm. we, we do have such systems in place where we are saying, if something like this happened, report it to the authority. If you are not happy about how the station commander, because that is the head of mm -hmm. the police station, that is the person who is overseeing policing within that precinct. If you are not happy about how this thing, it's, it's, it's been dealt with at a police station, let escalate it to another level. I think it's, it's, it's an issue of empowering our communities, knowing their rights. Mm. When you dare, you insist that if constable, you cannot assist me, then I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm not going anywhere. The station commander must come and sort it out. Or the, 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 the cluster commander must come, sort it out. Or the provincial I'm commissioner, must it must be dealt we'll with. Talk. And <laughs> we, we're having cases. It's just that we, 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 we used to communicate Members who have been dismissed because they have transgressed the, the disciplinary procedure. Okay, I must catch steps. you off and I must say thank you and goodbye. You are leaving us now. Uh, you and I could talk forever, but yeah. look, <laughs> there's not enough time. Listen, few, t few too many names South Africa to mention. I mean, I'm going to give them, give them faces, give them names. Mm -hmm. Linda Gutla Lot, Courtney Peters, Iapa Yamile, Candice Albert, Bongega Pungula, Nicola Pina, Macy Mulife, Mavis Mabala, Many more, your friends, your sisters, uh, may their souls rest in peace. But we are going to keep talking about this because, you know, I, I think we've been quiet for long enough. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to a heavy discussion today on the shocking number of women and children abused and killed by their partners or men they knew. According to Stats South Africa, one in five women has experienced physical violence in a relationship. So look around you, count the women, and then think about that for a second. Joining us now, Kofi Ofori Boteng, author of Let Him Serve You, a father and staunch supporter of the movements hashtag protect our women and hashtag protect our girls. Kofi, yes, do you not think that like the deeply entrenched patriarchy mm -hmm. is the reason that men find it so difficult to sympathize and empathize with what's happening in the country right now? Well, um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's um, the deeply entrenched sense of patriarchy. I would say it's more of a misunderstanding of what patriarchy actually stands for. Ah. So patriarchy basically speaks to a man leading his family and a man providing for his family. And in a lot of these cases, we don't see this happening. We see a lot of absentee fathers. We see a lot of irresponsible men who don't take accountability for their actions. So uh, when we talk about patriarchy in that sense, then I, I would say it's more of a misguided mm. or mis misinterpretation of the word. What we're seeing over here is, is a sense of entitlement that comes with maleness or it comes with manhood that society has allowed to, to um, permeate into our psyches and into our everyday way of living. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where a lot of the damage is being done. You rightly spoke earlier, Lebu, about accountability on the side of the civil servants, for example. Mm. But in the homes, we're failing to see accountability with men. We're failing to see women hold men to accountability. And this is for a myriad, you know, um, mm. a number of reasons. It may be due to culture. It may be due to um, um, role, role stereotypes. Mm. But what we're seeing here is a lack of accountability on the part of men who, who think that their role is simply to control, to and dominate, yeah. and force, and hurt. Gerard, you said something mm -hmm. earlier, and I want to come back to you on that. You said we need to change the culture, and not culture as in, you know, your cultural rituals mm -hmm. that I'm mm -hmm. tossed on my culture is that, but like mm -hmm. the culture mm -hmm. of how we raise men in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And you, like you said, it it's going to take decades, but what's the immediate step, according to you? Like, what's the, like, when we all leave here, when the cameras go off, what's the immediate step the country should be doing to change that culture? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I mean, we can take great steps in, in what, what can we change? We yeah. can try and change how the police behave. We can try and change how, uh, you know, civil, um, civil servants behave. Yeah. Relatively easy, or at least try and, try and create that change. Yeah. Um, that's a good start. But, of course, obviously, ad adequate policing. People yeah. must know their consequences. If you're going to do this, you're going to go to jail. Yeah. So those are perhaps the more immediate structural changes we can make. Um, but also, like we said, it's not just a case of I, I don't believe that the, you know, treating women in this way is right. Mm. But what about when my friend makes a comment that's inappropriate? Do I speak up and say, that's not, that's not cool. You shouldn't oh. say that. Mm. So it doesn't really matter that I don't, I don't agree with what's going on. I need to speak up and speak out about that. Mm. And when my, my father or my brother or my friends are, are doing these things, to say, that's not, that's, that's, that's not on. Because if I'm not speaking out about it myself, mm. then it really doesn't matter that I don't agree with this attitude. Mm. No, because I need to create the change also. Yeah. Do you know what else I find? I just find that everything that's reported and everything that's perpetrated, it makes it look like it's a black problem. Am I the only one who feels that, that, you know, I don't feel like white women are going through what we're going through, or they're like, you know, outside of Riva, to be fair, yeah. you know, you were just like, ha, huh, you know? And like the jokes around it were, we found out a sportsman killed his girlfriend. And you're like, oh, guys, please don't, please don't let them be black. It's just, you know, it's yeah. enough. And then you're like, oh, it's a white guy. Yeah. Do you, wh what's happening there? Why aren't the white cases being reported? Well, there are also social and structural issues that make violence um, happen, you know, amongst black communities. Yeah. I actually think that we have not dealt with the trauma mm -hmm. of apartheid, which was a violent system. On, on, on black people uh -huh. um, and, and including black men. Mm -hmm. I also um, uh, think that, you know, right now, and, and, and that is where I, I disagree with, with Kofi, you know. Mm -hmm. I think patriarchy for me needs to be dismantled because mm -hmm. the social construct of masculinity right now does not fit into the reality. So if you were brought up to lead and if you were brought up to be the provider in this economic climate, mm -hmm. you need to redefine what being a man is mm -hmm. because the chances that a majority of men are not going to be providers are very, are very high. high. You are know? very high. And, and, and what, I, what, what I was saying earlier was the fact that perhaps what happened is that women for a long time have been dealt, have been dealing with a lot of changes in their roles. Imagine the women that were left by their husbands to come to the mines. Mm -hmm. 
immediately they had to be the single parent tending for the home making sure that they are mother and father uh -huh. and perhaps over the years they learned the skills that the patriarchy that tells men you are the provider you are the leader mm. no longer holds mm. you know and 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 i think for and me and perhaps me as a daughter watching my mother doing that yes. made me know that i can do it myself exactly. as well and, and the, the, the the point you are asking what can be done for me the greatest thing that men can do is just two things acknowledge that the patriarchy and the masculinity you were socialized in is problematic and own your own pain and your struggles about what that has meant because this is not only violence against women the greatest interpersonal violence happens amongst men Mandla was killed by men and therefore we cannot even say there's a patriarchy that works and a patriarchy that does not work we need to be saying can men get into a stadium can they have an imbizo amongst themselves? Talk to them, talk with each other. Yes, and hold each other to account. Because for me, as I said earlier, it's a continuum, you know? Mm. So can we call each other out? But can we talk about our pain? Mm. A lot of men were not fathered. Mm. Either because men had to go to the mines or just because it's a norm that fathers are not in the upbringing of their children. Oh. A lot of them will struggle with not finding employment. A lot of them are going to meet Lebo and Anele you know, who are outspoken, who are out there. How do you deal with that when everything you've been told about being a man is about you must lead, you must be a provider? I don't understand how you cope if you are not in a space where you can talk about that pain. A lot of them are going to meet men who love other men. And therefore, the concept of a man is not like also gung ho, you know, I only love women. They are going to meet men who like men. And the, they get threatened. You know, you, you, you cannot even, let alone femicide, I homosexuality to, is like, to oh my God. Because you said you disagree with him. So let's allow him to step in here. What do you think of what Le was saying? Well, um, I don't really see the, the, uh, the uh, disagreement because we're pretty much saying the same thing. Um, when we spoke downstairs earlier, mm -hmm. um, I did mention that um, we are going to have to redefine certain things in society. Patriarchy is a societal construct. Masculinity is a societal construct. So... Once upon a time, that's what masculinity looked like. That's what maleness looked like. That's what manhood looked like. But now, um, especially given the new dispensation, given the new constitution that, we, that we're living under, I mean, th think just 20 plus years ago, women were second class citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. So now that's changed. But our mindsets haven't necessarily caught up to the constitution that was drafted that represents the freedoms of every single person in this country, including women and children. So now, as men, we need to now re-educate ourselves, and as a society, we need to now redefine what masculinity is, mm -hmm. what manhood is, and what patriarchy is. Um, we talk about a patriarchal structure. Yes, it does exist. Yes, it has done a great deal of damage. But we can take that system, dismantle it as a society, and say, this is what we're putting in its place, given the, the new social context. And I think that's going to take us a lot further mm. going forward. Okay, sure. Actually, that's what Jared was saying earlier about the culture thing. Okay, guys, I have to say goodbye to you, Jared. Thank you Thank for bringing you. your expertise uh, to the table. Lebu, I also must let you go. Where can people get hold of you? What's your Twitter handle? At Zangazulu Girl. Oh, oh yeah, so sounds like she's ready for you. <laughs> Listen, when we return, we we'll delve into the movements behind the hashtags. And do you remember our weekly competition? You can win yourself an e voucher. It's worth 5,000 Rand. The details are on the screen. We'll be right back. And we're back. Thank you so much for all your engaging tweets as well as your WhatsApp messages. It'll take an entire hour for us to go through all of them. But before the show ends, we will go through a few. I'm still with Kofi Ofori Boteng. And joining us are Tande Gantleko, a survivor of abuse, who is resolute in a stance to not be a victim anymore. And Siabulela Gentile, co-founder of the hashtag Not In My Name movement that orchestrated marches that took place in Pretoria and Mafeking uh, this past Saturday. How did that go? It went very well. Um, in Pretoria, we had about three times the, the, the amount of people that we had anticipated. Which is what? What's three times? Because if it there's was, five people, it was, then it's it was, three times. It was, um, it was a thousand. Okay. Just uh, around there. But um, we are told we had about 3,500 people. Oh, nice. Yes. Right. So then, Kofi, let's talk about the hashtags. Yes. Do you, you know, it's hashtag not in my name, mm -hmm. hashtag men are trash. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think hashtags are doing when it comes to femicide? Is it helping? Is it awareness? Personally, when I, what do you feel about it? Um, I, think, I think it's mostly awareness. And uh -huh. what I really appreciate about 
all the hashtags so far, whether it's the men are trash hashtag, the uh, not all men hashtag, um, is the fact that it's generating conversation, conversation. And a lot of the time, it's, or rather of late, it's generating conversations on a deeper level before we would talk about it superficially. Um, and after about a week or so, it, it would blow over and we'd move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. But this, this has persisted over the last couple of weeks, if not months now. The uh, Men, of, uh, Men of Trash hashtag especially has, has been going on for almost a month now, mm -hmm. I think. And, and it's, it just shows that society is actually gripped by this and they actually want to hear what men have to say and what women have to say as well. Tandek, I mean, coming out of a relationship that was abusive, that could have ended very badly, you know, that put you in very dark places. When you read the hashtags, what goes through your mind? Is it just flashbacks and it takes you back to that place? Or are you happy that, guys, let's all speak about it? I'm very happy to speak about it, finally. And, um, you know, when I, when I was quiet, mm. right, you become, when you're silent, the, the battle is within you. Mm. And so when I see these things happening and I say, I cannot keep quiet about this. Mm. You know, I just couldn't sleep. The, the, the past month, the past four weeks, everything you see on television is about a woman that's raped and, and killed. Mm. And it's all by men. You see mm. what I mean? And so it came to that point where I said, you know what, I need to take a stand. Because at the end of the day, do you know how difficult it is to actually come out as a woman and say that, you know what, I was abused. Mm. For all those years I've been married, I was abused. Mm. And people will never see it that way, especially when your partner is known. When your partner- and he's the darling and he's he the He is the darling, he's got the following, people love him as a woman. How do I even start and say, your darling is actually abusive? Yeah. It was very difficult. But you know what? I survived it. And I'm here right now to tell the tale because a whole lot of women never get to survive that. Do you know what I found when I was reading every article, being in Drum or yes, Times Live yes, about you? Yes. Is that every time they spoke about your abuse, they would mention that you guys lived in a multi-million rand home. Mm -hmm. Therefore, making it economical. Yes. And that, you know, this man mm -hmm. who built this house oh, for yes, her, yes. you know, did you not find that you were already prejudged? Like, mm -hmm. ah, you've got a nice life. What's wrong mm -hmm. with you, lady? Type of thing exactly that now people look at your life from the outside yeah it looked so perfect mm -hmm. yes million dollar house mm -hmm. glass walls mm -hmm. people wanted that life they mm -hmm. wanted to be me in my cars in a cabriolet in glasses and most of the times i was wearing those sunglasses to hide, to hide the bruises you mm -hmm. see what i mean and so it is so difficult i found myself paralyzed I had already divorced myself from him a long time ago, but I had found myself paralyzed. I never thought there would be um, organizations that actually uh, would protect me and my oh. children. You see that? And so I was stuck in a place where, what do I do? Who do I talk to? You see what I mean? Mm. And I had no uh, mother to fight for me. Mm. You see, a mother knows but when a child is not right. sometimes mothers you back. You know, um, I w yes, of yeah, course. Yeah. Of course, a mother would say, yeah, you go fix that yeah. marriage because, you That's know. That's a good man is providing yes, for you. Yes, yes, exactly See, can I just ask you, when you guys were marching, and I think a thousand men, you know, rocking up to march, it's mm. a great start, and I don't want you to stop what you're doing. But when you guys were marching, what were the conversations amongst the men? Look, um, there, there was no time for conversations, really, especially with us who were leading the march. We, we had uh, black tapes on our mouths to, to symbolize uh, the, the, the silence that we have offered into, into gender-based based violence. You know, so you were so owning it, saying, we have yes, kept quiet about this, and this is why we're exactly. here now. It was only when we, we, we reached the union buildings where we removed them to say, now, mm -hmm. we have been quiet for too long, and we're standing up, um, we are breaking the silence. We are saying and doing something about this. I just, you know what it is? I want to be a fly. Maybe, Kofi, you can bring me into this. I just feel like being a fly in a room full of men where these things come up, you know? Because I look at Facebook and guys are joking about, you like guys, men are trash, in kokoma, you know, things like that. I, I just want to be a fly in a situation where there are only guys speaking. What are you guys saying to each other about this problem? Well, for a lot of guys um, that I've encountered or ha um, had the conversation with, they, they distance themselves from the men are trash ha hashtag, for example. They're saying that we're not trash. And it's, it's that very defensiveness that kind of lends itself to um, an, an almost uh, supportive environment for this kind of abuse to continue. So 
for a lot of guys, it's, it's denial, um, it's, it's self-defense, uh, which, which is really unfortunate because um, in a situation like this, what we should be talking about is, or listening to is the cries behind the words, mm -hmm. the pain behind the hashtag. That's what we're supposed to be listening to. But that's slowly changing as well, and guys are now starting to think and feel on a deeper level and empathize with women as well, as, as evidenced by, by Sia's um, project. Tanega, a lot of people say, you know, you, you stay in an abusive relationship because w women are raised to believe that marriage is an achievement. Did you come from that frame of mind? No, not at all. I was raised by a mother that, you know, she, she was a lioness, that one. Mm. And she instilled those values and principles at a very young age. I, I grew up knowing exactly what I wanted. I remember at the age of 13, um, you know, she would say to me, you know what, don't worry about the boys now. Mm. You'll find the right kind of boy for you in college. And so I was just focused like that. I already knew what I wanted. And I think that even having a relationship, a serious relationship for the first time, I took it seriously because I had thought, okay, if I'm gonna take this guy home and introduce him to my family, then it must be somebody that I'm willing to, to be with. You see what so I mean? So then why do you stay for 14 years in an abusive relationship? Uh, you know, it's, it's a very good question. Um, there's a lot of factors. I mean, men are different. Um, I will only speak about the type of men that I married. First oh. of all, you know, there's abuse that's also emotional. Oh. that just kills your spirit like that's that. That's the one that goes in first. It, it, exactly, yeah. you see what I mean? It starts from that and um, like Sislebu said, it would escalate and then it would be now a clap mm. this time. And then the next time, you know, a fist. And the next time it's a beating. You see what I mean? And so I couldn't understand. Um, at that age, I couldn't understand. I, I was thinking to myself, what have I gotten myself into? and what am I going to do about it? But I had no one to talk to. Because remember, um, I made the decision to marry him. I think even my, fa my own family, um, I don't remember being, um, you know, giving advice on how to do this in a marriage or this mm. and that. So, so I you never were basically had going on a manual that you exactly were writing Exactly, my the very goes. own manual. Okay. And so when I realized that I was in a situation that I couldn't control, I was just paralyzed. I, I, you know, I couldn't do anything about it at that time. Okay, so look, without a doubt, social media campaigns and hashtags are important, but action is most needed. And I mean, we're sitting around here trying to figure out like the steps towards the resolution. This is by no means a resolution, but these are the steps towards that. Stay with us. And welcome back to our final segment where we're talking about the rise in violent gender-based crimes and femicide since the horrific murders of Karabu Mugwena and many others that have come into the spotlight. I ask you for your tweets at Real Talk on 3. Kofi, this one's for you. Yeah. Do you think that mothers should be the ones to educate their daughters about what, sh what should happen and when they should leave a relationship? Well, um, I think both parents uh, have that responsibility, not just mothers. Mm -hmm. um, understand that mothers um, offer one perspective, mm -hmm. uh, the female perspective, which is all well and good. Mm -hmm. But a father can offer the insight of how a man thinks, what to look out for, uh, uh, the behaviors to be wary of, um, the, the, the approaches that an mm -hmm. abuser may, may come with. Look, for the most part, most fathers have seen it all. Um, some, have, some have even done it all so so they'll be speaking from a place of uh, experience and um it's hmm. tricky it's <laughs> it's a tricky one because because even even the best intentions um best intentioned fathers yeah. still fail in this respect because at the end of the day you need to understand that your child is an individual who still has to make his or her mistakes mm -hmm. so so you want to step in and protect but at the same time you need to let them make their mistakes and sometimes finding that balance between you know, uh, parental counseling and stepping in and saying, you know what, enough is enough, mm -hmm. that, that can be very uh, difficult to determine. All right. Uh, see, uh, uh, at Tulu Fellow, my, I can't read my own handwriting. At Tulu Fellow says, we applaud men like you. Thank you so much for all that you do. Do you think it is enough? No, 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 it isn't enough. In fact, um, we, the guys and I have taken a stand to say we are taking it further, okay. further to the people because a lot of people 
were not at the match um, and, and some of them can't reach through social media. You know, there are people who are facing these challenges right-handed, in, 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 in the, especially in the rural places in South Africa. So that's where we are going to go and in the townships, you know, and have real conversations and have boys and men to say, guys, what's the problem? Let us sit down, let us talk, because we are having an issue of dealing with, 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 with an old man who is angry, but we forget what he when he was young, he was neglected, mm. you understand? Um, we're ha having uh, programs like take a girl child to work. When you take a girl child to work, what are you saying the boy the child boys. must remain and do? You know, they stay home and, and all this anger and other things they build up when they are older, we are dealing. So, so basically with Not In My Name SA, we are trying to focus the shift uh, from the woman to the perpetrators, mm. because without the perpetrators, then you don't have victims. You understand? Mm. So, so yeah, things like what was she wearing, <coughs> where, where was she going at night? We, we, we're moving away from that, mm. you know, to say, um, guys, you must take collective responsibility mm. as men, whether you are an abuser or not. Mm. So, yeah, it is not enough. A lot uh, still has to be done, and everyone else needs to make their positive contribution. Okay, another tweet coming through from at Joseph 6624405. Wow, Joseph, really your entire ID number? Mm -hmm. uh, this tweet says, love is not war, but is a gentle magic. Now, I want to go to you. I think the misconception with people is that just because somebody is hitting you, we think that when they start hitting you, you stop loving them, right? And maybe you can come and you can, you know, kind of get rid of that. That even in the abuse, it's not that you didn't love him any longer. And, th and that's why it, w it's a, it was a tricky situation. Would you agree with me when I say that? I, I would say um, yes and no. Okay. Remember your abuser wants to own you. They want to control whatever it is you need to do. So they can actually isolate you. Mm -hmm. You know, I ended up not um, being social at all. Mm -hmm. When I was actually, you know, um, an extrovert in high school, I've got so many friends. But I never got to enjoy that because I was afraid of what people could find out. Uh -huh. So I was actually hiding under the, um, that, that, that picture that I had already created of a perfect life. Mm -hmm. And so it is very difficult. I would find friends that actually call me whenever they had, uh, you know, uh, disagreements with the husbands. What do I do with this? What do I do with that? Oh, you were the chief advisor. I was. Yet, in my very own marriage, I didn't know what to do. I, I, you see what but I mean? But my question is, even during the abuse, you know, I know up to a point, then you stop loving him, yes, obviously, because yes. you say you're taking yourself out of your marriage exactly. before. But I just think it's important to stress to people watching and women, little girls mm -hmm. watching that, you know, because this whole thing, I think we're romanticizing it, you know, mm -hmm. like love, love should not oh, hurt, yes. love should, but the thing mm -hmm. is, you can still love somebody who is abusing you. So when he was abusing you, there were elements of you that still loved him. Am I right or wrong? I think it wasn't love after that. Uh -huh. You see, that is where our young girls need to be informed. This is a time to tell them that somebody that hits you mm -hmm. and beats you up doesn't love you. Mm -hmm. So you cannot look at that as love. Mm -hmm. You see what Any I mean? Sort of a coffee, so, you agreeing, Champignon? I agree. Um, this year especially, I've been um, putting out a lot of posts that, that speak specifically to love. Um, what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. And love is actually an, a doing word. So It's a verb. It's a verb. It's and, a verb. You know, when you break it down, um, according to my faith, I'm a Christian, so love is patient, love, love is, is kind. kind, love keeps no record of wrongs, love does not judge. Yeah. All of these things you find in an abusive relationship. He's judging, he's impatient, mm -hmm. he's unkind, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's mean, he's... He he's, um, does not question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So So... We first need to understand what love is and, and, and internalize that and start working with that definition of what love is, the true definition of what love is, and then start distinguishing that from addiction because um, a lot of the time we get addicted to the relationship. So now you're in the relationship. This is what you've gotten used to. Mm. You're comfortable in this space. You know that um, he comes home from, from uh, a party, he comes home from uh, the bar, he's drunk, he's going to hit you. You've gotten used to that routine. Um, is that yes. pretty and much you it? you think that is love. And, and, and then, well, actually, that's your routine. routine. That's your new normal. So, so you're thinking he loves me because he does this to me. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I saw my mom go through it. Maybe I saw my aunt go through it. And she acted normally. So this has to be it. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not what love looks like. Mm -hmm. um, there are women out there who, who, and I've encountered a couple, who, who go as far as to say that you don't love me if you don't, you hit, don't me. hit me. 
So, so th the whole understanding of love needs to be, I think, taught. It's a, it's a matter of education, whether it, it happens in the schools, it happens in the homes, it happens in places of worship. Yeah. Women need to understand that love looks like work, work that affirms your value, work that affirms your dignity, work, work that affirms um, your power as a woman. I'm just going to leave the entire thing there. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for coming through. That is all we have time for today. Thank you to every single one of my guests for the invaluable contribution to this discussion and to you for all your tweets and your WhatsApp messages. I like the fact that there's a conversation like here happening on social media right now and you're debating and you're questioning each other and you're embracing each other. This is what we're here for as Real Talk on SABC3. Catch the repeat tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. on SABC3 for myself, Anele, and the team. Bye-bye. <laughs>